Y'all, let's go over uh, my week six best bets and predictions this week. I mean, we got a ton of good games to talk about. There's 12 teams playing six games um, that involve SEC teams, and uh, I really want to dissect and break these games down and kind of tell you how what my mind is thinking in these games. But without further ado, let's talk about the first game here at 12 o'clock this Saturday. It's number nine Missouri going to Texas A&M. A&M is favored by two and a half points. The over-under in this game is 48 and a half. Uh, they're not expecting a lot of points, which I think is dead on because I think points are going to be a premium in this game. Uh, A&M has an offense that's really good at running the football, but they can't pass to save their life. They might be one of the worst passing teams in the football this year. They're 116th. It really, it, they were not passing the ball even before Connor Wegman got injured. They, they were not effectively throwing the football. Marcel Reed coming in, they're running the ball better was he, with his dual threat ability, but uh, they are running the ball well. They're 13th overall in rush offense, but pass defense or pass offense is awful, 116th. They're very one dimensional. Um, Missouri, on the other hand, are coming in this game. They're undefeated, uh, but they played very meh. They're, they've not played impressive, right? They barely beat Boston College at home. They barely beat Vanderbilt in overtime at home. They've not played very good football. They, they're not looking like the Vanderbilt ta- team from last year where they had Dylan Schrader. And that, but defensively, they look good. They're third overall in, in total defense. Defensively, they're playing good. But it's like with those numbers, though, are those numbers inflated because they've not really played great competition. Their, their strength of schedule is somewhere in the 60s. So A&M has been way more tested so far than uh, Missouri has, and they're playing at home. Uh, Missouri is coming off a bye week here, and um, I think it's it was huge to have that bye week. It was also huge to have this game at 12 o'clock. Uh, if I, you know, I would not bet one way or the other on this game for either team to cover the spread or, or win. Um, I would stay away from that. I think Missouri is going to win just because I trust Missouri's offense more than I do A&M's. A&M is so one-dimensional, and Missouri has a pretty good defense. So I think Missouri will win this game, but I'm not confident in that pick either. If I had to bet on this game, I would take the under, the Texas A&M under in this game at 23 and a half. Uh, I don't, I don't see A&M scoring more than 23 and a half points in this game. You can get that at a really good deal too, at plus 115. So you can get more money back than you put in. So, and I think that's a good bet. And so I picked Missouri to win that game. But anyway, now let's get to the second game. You got number 12 Ole Miss going to South Carolina, and South Carolina is a, maybe one of the biggest surprises in the SEC. They have a really good ball team. I thought they were going to be hot dog water. I thought they were going to be terrible this year, but they're actually a pretty solid football team. Ole Miss is favored by nine and a half points. I think that's way too many points. This is a 3:30 game at South Carolina. South Carolina is a hard place to win at. South Carolina should be undefeated. The refs completely cheated him in the game against LSU. Um, but, you know, anyway, they lost that game. Um, so, talking about this game, um, it's going to be interesting to see what happens here. You know, South Carolina has a really good defense. Defensively, they're 14th in total defense. They're, they're 28th in rush defense. They're 23rd in pass defense. So, it's just a solid defensive ball club with South Carolina and they're going to be playing at home which will help them anymore and this is an Ole Miss team that struggled against Kentucky's defense and I think South Carolina's defense might be better than Kentucky's and South Carolina's playing at home Um, the thing is though South Carolina's offense is just not good they're 84th in total offense passing they're they're atrocious they're 107th in the country in pass offense Uh, they do run the ball decent they're 40th uh, you know, Ole Miss has a pretty decent defense themselves. Um, you know, they're number one. Uh, Ole Miss is number one in rush defense right now. They're only allowing 46 yards uh, on the ground a game, and that's kind of like the only thing South Carolina can do. I don't see South Carolina doing a lot, scoring a lot of points in this game, um, and I don't see Ole Miss scoring a lot of points either, but I think Ole Miss, I trust Ole Miss in this game more overall. I think with uh, Trey Harris, at receiver, uh, and uh, Jackson Dart at quarterback. I trust him more than Lenore Sellers or Robbie Ashford. 
Um, I would give Ole Miss the edge. I, I would. I think Ole Miss is going to win that game. But I will say I would take South Carolina and the points on that. I think they'll cover that nine and a half. So I would go with South Carolina plus nine and a half, and I would play that all the way to seven and a half actually. But uh, that's what I think about that game. Now the third the third game they want to talk about is Auburn is going to Georgia. Or Georgia is a twenty four point favorite. Over or under in that game is 52 and a half. It's a 330 game uh, in uh, <clears throat> in at Georgia, but uh, you know Athens is going to be rocking. Uh, Auburn is coming off a double di- digit lead that they blew in the fourth quarter. Georgia overcame a 28 to nothing deficit. Actually led in the game for 13 seconds uh, before Ryan Williams made that crazy play that he did. But you know. <sighs> I feel sorry for Auburn because this is the worst possible time they could go to Athens. They're going to be facing a Georgia team that's very, very angry right now. And I think they're going to really want to make a statement. Auburn, I've got them in my power rankings at number 15, but they're really not that bad. They just cannot close out games. Um, and, and, and and for whatever reason, they just and they're horrible at turnovers. They can't get out of their own way. Um, I would stay away from uh, the betting part of – the, the, the Georgia 24 points, I would stay away from that. I mean, Georgia may blow them out, but at the same time, I wouldn't be surprised if Auburn keeps it between 17 to 21 to 2 because Georgia has been really terrible about getting out early on teams. They kind of take a half off, and then they decide to play football. So I'd be scared to uh, lay the points with Georgia in this game. I would stay away from that. Um, I do predict Georgia will win this game, but as far as betting, I would stay away from this game entirely. Now, the uh, the fourth game I want to talk about is number one Alabama. They're 22 and a half point favorite over Vanderbilt. Over under in this game is 55 and a half. This is a 4:15 kickoff. Bama right now is firing on all cylinders. Um, they've got a good backfield with Jam Miller and company. Uh, they've got some good receivers led by Ryan Williams and Jalen Milrow. If you didn't see him play the other night, I mean, dude, he's he's a treat to watch play football. He's throwing the ball well. Dude runs like a four three forty, and he 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 you know he lets the blockers lead him well. He's just he's doing everything right. Uh, I really liked seeing him the other night when he was getting behind those offensive line and let them just lead the way and him run behind them. It, it, it makes it stresses a defense so much when you have to account for the quarterback running the football and he's just not good at running he's great at running and he's getting better throwing too um i think in this game uh if i was going to bet on this game i think i think bama is going to beat vanderbilt more than 22 and a half i would i would actually if i was betting i would bet alabama to cover that um you know, I, it's 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 going. You know, it's at Vanderbilt. I think there's going to be probably 80% Alabama fans. So it's going to be like a more of a home game for them. I would play this bet to 24. I think Alabama cruises in this game. And it's not that Vanderbilt's horrible. Vanderbilt's actually decent this year, but they're not even close to Alabama's caliber. And I feel like Alabama's playing really good football, so they should comfortably win that game. And I would take Bama at 22 and a half in this game. Now, the fifth game I want to talk about is Tennessee, the number four Tennessee Vols, who are 13.5-point favorites at Arkansas. The over-under in this game is 59.5. This is a 7.30 kickoff in Fayetteville, Arkansas. I already did the preview and prediction for this game, uh, but I'll talk about it here again, too. Um, I think that uh, there will be a lot of points in this game. Uh, you know, Even though Tennessee is top five in every statistical category defensively, Arkansas is going to be the best offense they've, they've faced so far. Arkansas has Taylor Green, Jaquindon Jackson, and they've got a, a wide receiver in Andrew Armstrong who's got almost 500 yards receiving. So, you know, Arkansas has got some guys that can score some points in this game. Um, the thing about it is, though, Arkansas doesn't have a lot of depth. And defensively, they're not even close to Tennessee's caliber. Um, and that's where the problem's going to be. Tennessee, I think, in this game is going to score in almost every uh, possession. That's just my opinion. And I think Arkansas will score, but they're not going to score at nearly the rate that Tennessee is. Uh, it is imperative that Arkansas gets off to a really good start. Uh, and uh, But... You know, they're kind of led by Taylor Green, and Taylor Green kind of has to do everything. And if they keep Taylor Green intact, 
they don't have any kind of chance. He's going to have to get out of the pocket. And Tennessee has too many athletes. Aaron Carter, James Pierce, they're going to be on him all game long, and the depth for Tennessee is going to wear Arkansas out. The front seven for Tennessee is the best front seven in football. And uh, I think they're going to, in the, the second half, they'll take this game over where Arkansas's offensive line out. Now, the 13 and a half points, I wouldn't mess with that. That's a lot of points on the road. You know, we have a, a, a freshman quarterback in this game. I would stay away from that. I would bet the over in this. I think Tennessee's going to score at least 42 points. I think Arkansas at least score 20 some points. So, I think the uh, the over 59 and a half is a pretty good bet. Um, Tennessee at 13 and a half is not a horrible bet. I would just personally stay away from it just because it is on the road. Uh, and Fayetteville, I mean, just like most SEC stadiums, it's a hard place to play at night. So, uh, but I do think Tennessee will win that game. Uh, but I would stay away from the 13 and a half and go with the over. Uh, Anyway, now the last game I want to talk about here is UCF, who's favored by three points at Florida. Over-under is 61 and a half. 7.45 kickoff, Gainesville, Florida. UFC, UCF is coming off of just an absolute butt-whooping by the hands of Colorado. And Colorado is not a, quad, I'm, a squad that I'm very impressed with. Uh, you know, uh, very surprised that Colorado went in there and did that to them. Um, now, as far as this game is concerned, I have picked Florida in, in several games so far this year, and, and they burned me most of the times when I picked them. Um, I thought they would be better than what they are this year, and the thing that's really hurt them, well, there's a lot of things that have hurt them, but the main thing, in my opinion, that's hurt Florida is their, their defense is just god-awful. They're 112th right now in total defense, uh, and it's just been a disaster. Uh, offensively, they're very average at best. I think they're like, you know, uh, I think they're 50th overall in total offense. They're, they're flip-flopping quarterbacks with Lagway and Mertz. Um, and it's just not a, a recipe, in my opinion, to be consistent and win a lot of ball games. Um, Florida has to have this game. But, I, I, you know, I think UCF, even though this game is in Gainesville, I think they're just the better team. Um, UCF has got like a top 10 uh, at least statistically, an offense. Defensively, they're 53rd, which is not good, but it's a lot better than Florida's defense. Um, and I just think that UCF is going to score a lot of points on that Florida defense. Uh, I mean, Florida really struggled to even stop Mississippi State a lot of times. At times, Mississippi State was just going right up and down the field on Florida. This might be the worst Florida defense I've ever seen. So I just feel like with uh, – K.J. Jefferson at quarterback, even though his QBR rank, he's not that great. He's already been in Gainesville before. He's won there at Arkansas. I feel like uh, I think UCF is going to go in there and win. Now, I'm not confident on that. I wouldn't be surprised if Florida won, won that game. I would stay away from that bet at the UCF uh, minus three. I wouldn't pick one way or the other on that one. That's kind of like Russian roulette. I would bet the over in this game. I think there's going to be a lot of points in this game. I think Florida's going to score a lot as well. So I wouldn't be surprised if this game got into the 70s as far as a total point. So anyway, guys, that was a lot of games I just had to go through, and I did a lot of talking. Uh, I hope if uh, you take any of my advice, I hope it works out. But it was fun going through these games and discussing them. But I will talk to you guys later. Have a good day.